Hey guys, want to make a video for those of you out there looking to get into sim racing, but might be a little overwhelmed with all the options out there. I've been getting asked by quite a few of you now what my recommendation is, so I wanted to make this video to help you in your search. Before we get into it, I'll be playing some footage from my Twitch stream of me driving with a few shots of my rig scattered throughout the video. Feel free to stop by the stream and hang out at twitch.tv forward slash star tin man. I stream every week, Friday and Saturday. With that out of the way, let's get into it. First, let's rewind to about a year ago when I initially decided I wanted to get into sim racing. I wasn't exactly sure if I was going to take sim racing too seriously, so I wanted something that was low cost to avoid feeling guilty if I didn't use it as much as I thought I might. Not only that, but I wanted to avoid mounting the wheel and other components directly to my desk as I want to be able to use my desk for other things and didn't want the setup slash teardown process to deter me from wanting to drive. After looking around, I saw a lot of different brands and read a lot of different opinions online on what the best sim rig was. But most of the comments that I read were recommending sim rigs that were starting out at a minimum of around $1,000, which was way over what I wanted to spend. Not to mention, with these types of rigs, not only do you have the cost of the rig itself, but then you have to pay for a seat, monitors, monitor stands, which can quickly skyrocket the price. So from there, I started looking at wheel stands instead of full rig setups. I soon realized that there aren't really a lot of good wheel stands out there, but one specific wheel stand caught my attention, and that was a Next Level Racing Wheel Stand 2.0, which at the time of making this video is priced at about $250. So with that in mind, let me start out with the pros on the setup. First, it gave me the ability to mount not only my wheel base, but also the pedals, shifter, and e-brake to the stand. It also had a chair cradle that let me use my current desk chair with the stand, so no need to buy an additional seat. It also was foldable with my wheel component still mounted, so I also didn't have to unmount everything if I wanted to fold it up and just store it away. Another thing that caught my eye about the setup was that it was modular and had the ability to be upgraded to a full sim racing cockpit piece by piece using the already purchased wheel stand if I chose to, but I'll talk about that more later. Once I got the wheel stand and set it up though, there were some additional features I didn't realize I probably should have been thinking about and looking out for. First, what's referred to as the wheel deck which essentially is just where you mount your wheelbase to, it had an adjustable angle, which gave me some flexibility on the setup. You could also adjust your wheel deck height independently from the shifter slash e-brake mounting bracket, which gives you even more adjustability. The pedal plate where your pedals get mounted to was also easily adjustable, not only in their distance from you or me, but also if I want to adjust the angle of the pedal plate, I could. I believe this wheel stand supports the inverted setup, but I can't say for sure since I never tried it. Okay. So enough about the pros, what about the cons? To be really honest with you, I don't have a ton, but there are a couple of things I do want to call out. First off, I'll say I wasn't a huge fan of the shifter position. Could have been because of how the Thrustmaster shifter mounts to the stand itself, but I found it to be a little bit too far back from my liking, and there wasn't really any way to move it from where it was mounted to. The other small thing is that the chair cradle works pretty well, but it's not perfect either. Depending on how your wheels on the chair fit into the chair cradle itself, when you push against the pedals, it might move the chair wheel slightly and make the setup feel a little bit off. This really isn't a big issue, but it's just something that I felt like I should mention. Beyond those two things, this has been a great purchase for their price, and I've been really happy with it myself. I just feel like it's the perfect entry rig for anyone out there interested in getting into sim wheel racing for the first time. I also do want to add some words of advice or maybe suggestions if you do decide to get this wheel stand. If you want this rig to be a little bit more mobile, you can also buy their wheel stand wheels. I know that kind of sounds weird, but what I'm referring to is the wheels that screw in on the bottom of the rig and have the ability to lock. So you don't have to slide it across the floor or pick it up and move it, but rather just wheel it around and then lock it in a place when you're ready to drive. Another important note, to get the best stability with your wheel base on the stand, there are typically holes in the bottom of most wheel bases that you can use for directly mounting your wheel base onto the wheel deck instead of whatever desk clamp mount that probably came with your wheel base. The mount that came with my T300 worked, but once I did this direct mount method, I found that some weird force feedback jitters, which I didn't really even realize was happening, completely stopped. Not only that, but I felt more confident to have my force feedback settings a lot higher, and I wasn't worried about the wheel randomly coming off. That said, my wheel never really came off the wheel deck, but I did find myself constantly adjusting it after a long session. You can also do both, the direct mount method I just explained, and the desk clamp mount if you want to be extra sure that doesn't go anywhere, but... Honestly, it's not really needed. One last thing. I talked about the ability for this wheel stand to be upgraded into more of a full rig. I just recently upgraded to a full sim rig setup, which I'll make a video on soon. But when I made the decision to upgrade my rig, I decided to not buy the parts to make the stand a full rig. 
The reason honestly just came down to the fact that the cost of the additional pieces were just slightly cheaper than the cost of a full sim rig. And so I felt it wasn't enough of a cost savings to not just buy a more full stable rig. So to finish off this video, my honest and non-sponsored opinion for those of you looking to get into sim racing and want to be cost conscious, but still have something that's solid and has good adjustability, I think the next level racing wheel stand 2.0 is the best bang for your buck and can be something that you can use for a long time without feeling you ever need to really upgrade. I feel that the pros extremely outweigh the cons. And like I said, realistically, there aren't even that many cons. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll be making a video about my new setup shortly and hopefully a little bit more content in general. So subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if it was helpful at all to you. Also, I'll pass a question off to you guys. What do you think is the best starter wheel stand? And do you agree with my video? Until next time, peace.